Hi everyone, my name is Tatiana and in front of me I have the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for the month of June. In the regular kit you get a die set, a stamp set, four ink cubes, some watercolor paper, and then if you get the premium kit you get a three-layered stencil, some embellishments, and some shimmery embossing powder. So let's get right into it and make some cards. Hello and welcome to the voiceover segment for today's video. In this segment I'm going to make two out of the five cards because I couldn't quite fit all five cards into one video. So I will make a second video and it should be available later today or tomorrow. So the first thing I did was cut out this oval window die and I really just wanted the palm trees from the die. And the palm trees end at the edge of the oval so I'm extending the palm fronds by cutting into the margin of the paper a little bit and I'm doing it a, quite a little roughly to begin with and then I'm going to fix it up later so that these uh, fronds look like the other ones on the tree so I'm just going to separate it from the rest of the cut here and then when it is free I'm going to go back in and the underside of the leaf, I'm just going to cut two snips into it and then pull out the little middle piece so that it sort of mimics the way the other undersides of the leaves look. And there will be a little dent in the side, that side that the die causes, but you have to be comfortable with that because it's not going to go away. <laughs> so then the other tree had little feet on the ends of the leaves and I just ended up snipping those off and not doing too much else to it just tidying it up a little bit and then you're left with two trees that you can use so the next step was I knew this was going to be a dark card base so I wanted the white to really stand out and be shimmery so I'm using the uh, shimmer embossing powder and I'm just taking the palm fronds and dipping them into some embossing ink and then that it, and then coating them with the embossing powder and um, heating them and then it creates this lovely shimmery effect. Now one thing I would mention is that I held my tweezers too far into the sun or moon and it created uh, a spot that there was no powder on so when I took them off I'm like oh I have to do that again so just hold hold your sun or moon by the very tip if you're going to emboss it that way. So next I'm going to create a little paper doll out of the silhouette stamp of the woman and I'm just going to experiment here with some colors to see what the base color what base color is best and this was too dark I think this was Hero Arts Sand and what I ended up using for the base color was a, an ink by Lawn Fawn called Jellyfish that a lot of people use for no line watercoloring and I'm also stamping some outfits for her here because I wasn't sure if I wanted to give her a, a blouse and a skirt or whether I wanted to give her a dress. And at this point I'm even stamping out some flesh colored legs for her because I wasn't sure what direction I was going to go. But I didn't end up using the legs. So in the middle of the card here you can see there are two lighter color versions. And the one on the left that I'm cutting out right now is the Lawn Fawn Jellyfish ver version. And that is what I used for the base of the paper doll. <clears throat> and the one beside it that you can see on the tabletop sitting there is the Versamagic Sukineko color wheat. That is also a really nice, very pale color. But anyway, I'm so I'm fussy cutting the little doll out and there's just one spot where you have to use a knife. You could probably use a really sharp pair of scissors if you had to, but I didn't trust myself to do it well, so I'm just using a little knife to cut out this tiny little piece here. And then once that's cut out, I'm going to use that other light colored piece to um, cut out the hat. So she has a different colored hat. And that's not very difficult to cut out at all. The hardest part is the base of the woman. You could do this with the other silhouette stamps that are included in the kit. The sailboat, if you use two similar colors, you could cut out two different sails. Um, any silhouette stamp you have, you can think about how you can sort of take it apart and restructure it so that you can put little pieces of it back together in different colors. 
So I'm just trimming up the hat here. And then I'm going to choose one of those colors I stamped out for the dress. And I turns out I chose the turquoise. And all you have to do is cut off the legs and cut off the head and cut off the arm. And you're left with a little dress. And it's kind of fun to do actually, because you're the creator of your paper doll. So all we have to do is put a little bit of glue and then I'm just going to make sure the dress is on straight, which it actually wasn't. So I'm just fussing with it a little bit here. I had to actually pull it over a little bit. It's amazing how quickly that drew, glue dries. You put that on and you don't have much time. So I knew there was going to be a dark background, so I'm just putting them on here to sort of build the scene and see exactly how I want things to go. And it's going to be a very simple scene. And then I thought uh, that moon is too... I, need, I wanted more color than her dress, so I just wanted to put a little bit of yellow on the moon. And... I'm just adding a little bit and once you get the embossing powder on there um, any ink you put on there is going to is not going to show up as well as it would on paper that's for sure like you really if you don't want much ink you don't have to worry you have to really press on it to get more ink which I'm doing right now because I did want more ink and there I've just made a yellow moon and so then I thought, well, it's a night scene and I've got a moon, so why don't we make some stars? So I'm taking some um, paint and I'm just putting it on an acrylic block and I'm, I'm using a water brush to smoosh it around and I'm squeezing the water brush, so I am adding water to this. And I think it was still too wet, so I'm adding a little bit of spray water from a bottle. And then I'm going to flick and make some stars. It's so satisfying to watch that afterwards. We there's the stars. And one of the stars was really big and looks like a planet. And then I went back and made two more planets. And then I'm drying it because you definitely want to dry it because you don't want to put something on there and smear it and that's just going to ruin the whole darn thing. So I dried it quite well, but it doesn't take all that long to dry. And then we're just going to do a little bit of scene building. I don't think I even used any foam tape on this. I just glued everything down. And that was it. I am going to add a sentiment to this, but the stamp that I was using, um, I was having troubles with it. I don't know why it, I don't know if it was me or the stamp, but I couldn't really get it to, oh, and here, as you can see, I'm hesitating. I'm thinking, mm, I think this is a little bit, this is where I get, I just drive myself crazy because I thought, there was nothing wrong with that, but for some reason I thought it was too yellowy, so I went back and I put a little bit more um, of the lighter wheat colored ink on it just to tone it down a bit. So anyway, I'm going to glue everything down here and then, I, oh yes, I do put some foam behind the lady just to, just so that she stands out a little bit more. And then after I glue the lady down, that's where I try to stamp the sentiment, but for some reason that sentiment wasn't, I'll show you here, I, I went to use embossing ink, I was going to emboss it obviously because we have a black background, and I'm testing out where I'm going to put it, and then I decide I'm going to put it right there, and I don't think I pushed it too hard, but I, when I went to put the embossing powder on it, I was going to use white embossing powder, it just looked to me like it wasn't going to be to my liking once I heated it. It just, it didn't look like there was enough definition between the letters. And so, and I didn't think it was anything 
I didn't think I could stamp it any better. So I thought this isn't going to get any better. So I just took a tissue and I wiped it off. But the thing about embossing powder on a black background, or probably any background, is that once you put it down, it's you're going to see it. It's not going to go away. So I decided I would just do the same thing all over again on a piece of black cardstock. And this time I did it four different times because I thought if I have four different stamps to choose from, I'm sure that one of them will be to my liking. And this one was the one. I don't know why, but the Y, the letter Y in birthday, it wasn't coming out for me very well, and I just couldn't get it to work. But it could be something wrong with me, I'm not sure. So anyway, that one in the bottom right is the one I'm going to use, and I'm just going to heat it. And then I got so excited about it working that I went to trim it and I realized that I didn't heat any of the other ones. So I've got a bunch of powder on the inside of my, on the inside of my cutter. I got a bunch of powder right when I push it down there. You see there's, there's powder all over the place. I get so involved in what I'm doing that I forget about other obvious things. But there's my sentiment and then I think I need to trim it again because it wasn't quite right size and then we have it the right size and I'm just going to glue it right on top of the original place that I stamped and there we have the card and I get a little bit too much glue and then I trim it off with my poker tool and then we'll use some foam tape to give it a little bit of impact because the only dimension that I put on the card was the little lady so this gives it a little more oomph. And that is card number one. Happy birthday. I'm already thinking about who I'm going to give that to. Oh yes, and then I noticed that I had some paint splatters where I didn't want them. So I used a sand eraser, which is my standby. And a sand eraser is wonderful when you're using white paper, but when you're on using black paper trying to get something white off do not use a sand eraser because you can see I left a smudge there so I went back in with a micron pen and I covered it up but then the smudge was still there and so then what I'm doing now is I'm daubing some black ink because I thought you know what she needs a little bit of a, sh a moon shadow or a shadow around uh, where she's standing anyway so why don't I just put some black ink and you can actually see that it it does create you can put black on black it looks kind of nice and all, I learned that just from covering up a mistake. Isn't that nice? I would never have thought to put black on black, but out of necessity I did. Okay, so card number two, I started with, there's that Versa, Mar Versa Magic, Sukineko Versa Magic ink, and it's called chalk ink, but I suspect it's a just a pigment ink. And the color is wheat. I really, really like this color. It's good for all kinds of nice light uh, things when you need a really nice light beige color. So I'm just doing the first level of the stencil with that wheat color. And I really like it. It's a, it's a nice color for the shells. And then I went to use sand over the same um, stencil and I was like wait a minute I think I need the other stencil <laughs> so I went and got the other stencil and I'm using sand to go over the outline of the shells and that is a nice complement to that wheat color I thought it looked really nice and then for the third layer I ended up using Simon Hurley's lunar paste and I have two, he has two different colors of gold, and this is the lighter color of gold. Um, they both look nice. I, I end up using both in this video, so I'll show you the difference between them. And I just gave it a nice, good coat of that, and it turned out really nice. So here what I'm showing you is that if you use the lunar paste on different stencils, you'll come up with different effects. So you can see there the snails in the middle, top middle and middle middle. 
I've used the lunar paste in the darker of the gold and I've used it on stencil number two, whereas the other ones, I've used the lunar paste on stencil number three. So there's the difference. If you want to use the lunar paste or any paste on stencil number two, it outlines and there's that wonderful shimmery color. As you can see, there's a light and a dark uh, gold color there. And those are his two different colors of lunar paste in gold. I paused it there so you could ad admire the brilliance of the gold. <laughs> I think it looks great. Okay, so that was a really nice base, but then I saw all these people making colored shells and, oh, there's the names of the, um, the lunar paste. The lighter colored one is called Slippery When Wet and the darker colored one is called Gold Rush. So I wanted to make some shells that had some color. While, while that um, initial use of the stencils was a nice base color for a card, I thought I'm going to embellish this card with some colored um, shells. So I ended up doing a rainbow and you can see the colors that I used there on the side. I think I just used the colors in the kit and added thistle on to the end. So I'm just doing a quick rainbow on the base layer of the stencil. And one thing I know about myself is that I'm very heavy handed. And so that is the case here. I was very heavy handed. I just want to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub that stencil until I don't like, I'm sure that I got a good color down and that's fine. It, as you can see, it turned out really dark. So it's kind of a dark colored rainbow. And then for layer two, I'm using sand again, because sand is just a nice, um, a nice color, I think for, for the shells, for the outline of the shells. And then after I finish up with layer number two, I'm once again going to use the lunar paste and this time I think on the colored ones, I ended up using the darker shade, the gold rush for stencil number three. And as you can see, I, my stencil was not lined up perfectly. I didn't do a great job of lining it up. So what I did was I went back to stencil number one, I guess it was. Yes. Yeah, stencil number one. And I just went over it again. And it's very tricky once you've created a harsh line with a stencil to go then go back and and you know perfectly um erase that but it i did go back in and i i'm happy with how it turned out it it didn't create like at least there wasn't a big white line inside of my shells which would have bothered me but you can see after i went over it again it it turned out pretty well so never fear, if you mess up, you just go right back and do it again. So now I'm going to do stencil number three. And actually, I think this is the light one again. I'm using the light color, slippery when wet. Yeah, this is the light color. And there it is. And as you can see, I smooshed it. Oh, also I went back and did a lighter version because I thought, you know what? I think I pushed too hard. So there's no right or wrong. If you like a pat more pastel color, um, just go lighter. Cause with the one you're looking at now, that's all I did. I just went a lot lighter with the, with the, um, with the, with the brush or not the brush, the sponge. Uh, this is now the darker version of Simon Hurley's lunar paste. This is the gold rush. And you can see the different difference it makes. I put the dark lunar paste on the lightly colored stencil and I put the light lunar paste on the dark colored stencil. It's more of an antique gold color, I guess. Still very lovely though. So then I went ahead and fussy cut both sheets. Uh, on the right hand side are the pastels and on the left hand side are the darker ones and I'm sort of mixing and matching them here. I wanted to create two groupings 
um, of shells in the top right and the bottom left. And as I did that, I felt like the other two corners were a bit left out. So I also added some sh just one shell to each opposite corner. And I just love this. I really love this card. The stencil effect on the on the card alone is is beautiful, but then putting the colors on top, it just really I think it really makes it pop. And I have always loved making 6x6 six six cards. They're actually my favorite card to make, and I haven't made one in a really long time because it's, you know, it's just so much easier to cut an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper in two, but I like the real estate that a 6x6 six six card gives you. There's just a lot more room to play with, and the dynamic of a square shape is definitely different from that of a rectangle, so it was kind of fun and refreshing to go back to my basically my roots in card making because I, I started out um, making 6x6 six six cards. They were my favorite in the beginning, and I just kind of got away from it. But it's always nice to not have to alter a 6x6 stencil once you've once you've gone to all the work of creating it. And then I felt like the sentiment was from the stamp set was a little bit too small for a 6x6 card, so I cut out um, a white piece of a white rectangle and I mounted it onto a gold rectangle and then hoarding thickers, hundreds of, probably not hundreds, but I've got dozens of packs of thickers that I've been hoarding for years, and the hoarding paid off. This is where it all paid off, because I just happened to have exactly what I wanted. I had a thicker in the color that I wanted, which was gold, and in the exact size that I wanted. Like, only through hoarding could that be a thing, right? I mean, how how is it possible that I had the exact perfect size and color? So, um, I didn't, I just kind of held the sticker sheet up to this piece of cardstock and sort of generally figured out where these should go. And they're pretty easy to move around. So I figured if I just wouldn't push them down too hard, um, at the beginning. And then as I started putting them on there, I was getting confident that it was all going to turn out okay. So... I was kind of pushing them down, and it did turn out okay. And then I, the O is a little bit off there, but anyway, I came up with this thanks shallot, and I just pushed that down on there. And then at this point, I was like, okay, the card's done. I was just admiring it and letting the gold glint in the light. And then I looked at it and I thought, no, this is m missing something. And then I realized that what it was missing for me was this extra layer of gold on the back. So I went and cut um, a six by six piece of gold. I guess I must have cut this down to just under six by six because that gold base is six by six. So the card does end up coming out to six by six and I'm pleased about that because I wouldn't have wanted to cut down that the stencil um, any more than that. And then I'm going to press it out there with my fingers and that will be card number two. So as I said, I'm sorry but I couldn't fit all of the cards into one video um, without it being like a movie length video. So I'm going to create another one and this will be part one and that will be part two and um, stay tuned for the rest of them. I'm going to show you some pictures here at the end and I'll just say bye bye for now. Thanks for watching.